And there is one other person who's been absolutely crucial to Genomics England, and that is the Chief Medical Officer, uh, Dame Sally Davis. Thank you, Viv. Thank you, Minister. And John, I want to take you back four and a half decades. And I was sat in a series of interviews in medical schools. Why do you want to be a doctor? Some of you might think I was naive, but I sat there and said, because it's a double helix. It's so beautiful. We have to understand it. We have to know what it means for medicine. Fast forward a decade, three and a half decades ago, and my husband died of chronic myeloid leukemia. We knew the chromosomal abnormality, but if we go now only two decades ago, I stopped the senior NHS management team for the whole of London's meeting and said, I'm now going to tell you about the new research. At long last, we have a medicine that would have saved my husband's life, and we have it because it was designed for that molecular abnormality, a humanized antibody technology that came out of Cambridge called Gleevec. And this whole senior management team sat there a goal listening. You, we can change the lives of people. And now we've got 100,000 genomes. This matters to patients. But we need the research, we need the data and the research, or it won't make any difference to patients. And we're going to need the help of the private sector because actually this is not something the public sector can do on its own. Why did we set up Genomics England? A minister has actually touched on it, and you've seen with Sir John why we did it. The bureaucratic public sector can't do this. We need the entrepreneurial drive of a company. But what I want to reassure all of you about is this company belongs to us. It belongs to the taxpayer. So we are all the shareholders, the beneficiaries, but we're getting the benefit of Sir John's entrepreneurism and other people who are joining in, and the fact that they aren't shy of working with the private sector when the private sector brings things that the public sector can't do. This is true partnership. This is pushing us forward. But not only do we all in this room own it, well, if you're a British taxpayer, not if you're foreign. We own it, but it's inside that data, inside the NHS firewall. This data is being looked after for us I keep trying to find a reason why my genome should be done and in there. I think I've got a reason, but they won't buy it yet. And it's building on the clinical infrastructure we'd already built for the National Institute of Health Research so that we're using what we've got there as, as blocks to make it work. This is the first time we've assembled data from across the country and curated it to make a difference. It's ambitious, it's bloody difficult, it's important, and we're doing it. And we're doing it with patient consent. We're doing it protecting that data. That one of Sir John's wonderful thoughts was to say, this data isn't gonna be a lending library. No one can just come in and borrow the book and take it away. This is a reading library with permission from an ethics committee, with permission from an access committee, bona fide people doing worthwhile work can come in and look at the data, anonymize, use it, and we know exactly what they've done and they can't take it away. We are working to protect patients by producing the right things, but to protect our individual data. And in fact, at the outset of this project, Prime Minister and our ministers told me that as your chief medical officer, I have to keep an eye out on all of this on behalf of patients. Another reason I want my DNA in there is so that I can actually say I'm watching all our DNA. And this research process is very important. And we can do discovery in this way with the support of the private sector and academics. But you know the bit when that leads to making a difference beyond diagnosis to treatment is done by the life sciences companies.
academia and their employers. We have to have partnerships. We have to make this work. Or our patients, my husband that died, all of you and your families won't get what we should have a right to have because we have a resource that is unique in this country. And we need these drugs developing, then testing with us. But we've got rules for industry in the private sector. And those rules are about data access. They are about working with patients, engaging with patients, and making a difference through that. So to come full circle, I wanted to catch up on time so that we can have some questions. I, as Chief Medical Officer, which as many of you will know is a statutory independent advisory role to government, write some annual reports every year, as well as giving you all guidelines like alcohol and everything. But I'm now embarked with the support of all the experts in this country on producing a report on genomics and what that means. We've embarked on it, we hope to produce this in the autumn and it will lead with the support of Viv and 100,000 Genomes into a much bigger public conversation. We're starting this, but we've got to go bigger, involve more people so they understand and understand that excitement. We know we've got the clinicians and researchers with us. We know as patients join in, they're excited too. But I want the nation to get it, that this is a moonshot that we're going to land. The nation to get the excitement so that we can all do it well and participate. So, please join us in this wonderful roller coaster that's making a difference for patients. Thank you. <laughs>